night, Steph. Night, Tom. Steph, I think you can get here a half hour early tomorrow. Okay, Roy, I'll try. You a goodie. All right. After dinner, go wash your hands. No, don't worry about the dishes. Go get your books. We're late. Let me see your face. Come here. <laughs> you liked it, huh? <laughs> Abby, put your coat on. We're gonna miss the bus. If you need more hours to compile your data, see me after class. Midterm is next week, so it's now or never. Jojo's running a fever. Can I help? No, just take Abby home, okay? Look, Bren, I'm sorry. I only have six more weeks of school left. I know. Bren, we've been friends too long. If Abby's getting in the way, all you have to do is say so. No, she's fine. I'm just tired, okay? You know what a lifesaver you've been ever since... You... Thank me one more time and I'll kill you. I swear I'll make it up to you. You know it. Your kid is all mine as soon as she's old enough to babysit. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Emma. Bye. Bye, Emma. Let's go. Yeah. Bye. Let's go. Let's go. sometimes. <laughs> oh, Abby, be careful. I need that book for my midterm. What's a midterm? Midterm is a big, important test that I have to do really good on so I can pass that class. Because you know what happens when I pass that class? Then you get a job that pays lots of money. <laughs> so I don't have to go to night school anymore. 
which means I get to spend more time with my favorite daughter. <clears throat> we go to the park like we used to. Maybe I could buy you some new clothes like I promised. And after a while, if things are going like I hope, we can get a better apartment. Maybe move closer to Brenda. What do you think of that? I don't know. Well, maybe you can have your own room. What do you think of that? I don't know. Well, I know somebody who's going to be in big trouble if she doesn't get ready for school <laughs> right away. What do you think of that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to race you to the bathroom. And I'm going to win. I'm going to beat you. I need two bottles of ketchup, Tommy. Hey, Steph, you don't like hockey, right? Uh, yeah. I got two tickets tonight. Oh, two burgers medium, BLT, whiskey down. I got it, Roy. I can't, Tommy. I'm busy. Why? I'm just really busy. Come on, we'll have fun. Steph, I got customers here. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, Tommy, I'm sorry. I just... I got bills up to here, night school, a kid to worry about. Who's got time for fun? Hold still, monkey. Mom, I'm a Cherokee princess and I'm practicing my dance. Okay, well, turn around so I can pin this last one on. Grandma did it faster. Yeah, well, Grandma's gone, baby. I'm not a baby. Tommy, the guy I told you about from the diner, go downstairs and let him in, okay? Okay. I'm coming down! He's cute. I know. Let him in slowly. Okay, slowly. Bye. Bye. I want to see the game. I want to see you. I'm glad you don't mind me just barging in like it's this. It's great having company, don't you think, Abby? Mm-hmm. I really don't get too much of a chance to go out anymore. My grandma used to watch me. Oh, yeah? I bet you're a handful. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe when things get less crazy, we could go to a game or something when I get this computer stuff behind me. What you're doing is great stuff. I don't want to get in the way of that. Thanks. I am going to have to kick you out soon, though. I got a big test coming up and I got to study. I'm sorry. Just invite me to the graduation party. You got it. That boy was over 30 years old. Oh, that's a super. Weasel face. Abby, I have to talk to him about the heat going on and off. He's really hard to catch. Excuse me. Problem. That boy looks over 30 years old. I'm doing the best I can. Hey, Mr. G, what's with the heat? I like your mom, kid. I know. You're pretty smart for a kid. <laughs> I know. Tell her she should go out with me. Okay? Maybe. <laughs> See you at work. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to go to Brenda's house. I don't want to go, Mommy. You like going to Brenda's. The babies are always crying, and Gary does not like Oh, it. Abby, that's not true. When I want to watch TV, he tells me to go play someplace else. 
Omar doesn't really got time for her kids. Come on, Abby, do you want me to fail my test? I want to stay home at night like other kids. You know I have to go to school. Why can't I stay home by myself? Sometimes when I come home from school, I'm alone before you get back from work. Yeah, well, that's different. I can't leave you alone at night. Why is it different? Just put your coat on. Then that grandma died, you left me alone, sleeping and went to the hospital. Abby, that was an emergency. And nothing happened, and I was good. The heat's on at Brenda's. I'm not cold. Besides, it's almost bedtime, and it's warm if I use the extra blanket. You're gonna be a lawyer someday. I'll go right to bed, I promise. Okay, just get your PJs on right now. I want you to wash your face and brush your teeth. <laughs> Gary, hi, I'm in a rush. It's me. Abby's not coming over tonight. Can you tell Brenda? Okay, thanks. Bye. Abby, this is important. Are you listening? Yes, Mommy. I wrote down the number of my school just in case, and I tacked it up on the wall with the rest of the numbers. Where did I put the number of my school? On the wall, right next to the other number. And what number do you call in case of emergency? 911, Mom. 911. Okay. We got some serious house cleaning to do. Okay, Mom. You can watch TV until 8 o'clock, and then it's lights out. I love you. I love you, too. Mwah. I'll be home before you know it. Lock up after me. I will. Okay, get an A. <laughs> Okay, honey, look, I'm about to take my test. Please go to bed on time. I love you too, sweetie. Good night. Bye-bye. Good luck. Here you go. solo for the assembly, Pee-wee. I could probably teach you better with some music. Here's a song that they're gonna play.
we pour it into the boat. Uh oh. Open up. Abby? Are you alone in there? You come to make sure you're okay. Anybody here? Looks like someone didn't pay the electric bill. Abby? Abby, is that you? She's right here. Hi, honey. Where's your mommy? I don't want. We're the police. Are you hurt? Hmm? Don't be afraid now. It's okay. How long have you been alone? She's in pretty bad shape. Yeah, it's okay, Abby. We're not gonna hurt you. There's nothing to be afraid of. Come on, honey. Let's get you up. You can't stay here. It's not safe. I'm supposed to stay in bed till my mommy comes home. Yeah, but you're hurt. We gotta get you to the hospital and get you checked, okay? So come on, let's get up and get you dressed, okay? Mike, I think we need to take some pictures. It's leaking ceiling, peeling paint, no heat. Yo, Mike, got something to show you. I think we ought to bring it in. Nice. Okay, Abby, huh? let's go. It's gonna be okay, Abby. I wanna talk to my mother. She's at school. It's awful late for school, honey. Come on, we'll take you to a nice place where it's safe, okay? No!
How'd you get that bloody nose, hon? Does your mommy spank you? Abby? Does your mommy have a boyfriend? Does your mommy have a man stay at the house? Yeah. And does mommy ever leave you alone with Tom? What happens when you're alone with Tom? He showed me a trick. What happened then, Abby? What happened after that? What do you mean she's not there? Where is she? Well, what happened? Is she hurt? I'm her mother. You've got to tell me where she is. You got to call family services. We don't handle that here. Well, you have to have the number. Uh, hold on. Oh, I got here as soon as I could. Was it foul? Yeah, the kid was home alone. No heat, bruises. That's all in court. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it looks like mom's a junkie. I asked her some questions about her mother's boyfriend. It just doesn't sound right to me. She started to cry. I don't know. I guess we better make sure. I hate to do this, but maybe we better check her and see if she's been molested. Okay. Hi, Abby. I'm Mrs. Pearson from Family Services. I'm Dr. Klein. Abby, you remember when Mommy takes you to see the doctor? Do you? Well, I'm a doctor, too. And I'm going to examine you and make sure that you're not hurt. But I'm not sick. Well, we just want to make sure, honey. May I listen to your heart now? Where is my Mommy? Well, your Mommy's not here right now, honey. Let me listen for just a second. No! It's gonna be okay, honey. <laughs> and we just need you to lie down. That's a good girl. There you go. And just relax. I promise it'll all be over in a second. How old are you, Abby? Eight. Eight? Really? Now, this may be a little uncomfortable, sweetheart, but I promise you I'm not going to hurt you. All right? You just lie still for just a second, and then we'll go get you a soda, okay? Find your place to sleep. Don't worry, honey. I've called your mother. We'll talk to her. Dr. Steinman, I see you, Seth. Dr. Steinman, I see you, Seth. Dr. Johnson, ER, Seth. At 10, there were still three beds left at Fairfax. Well, why don't you call me back when you know something? I'm here to pick up my daughter. Who are you? Did you call before? Stephanie Monroe. I, I called the police. Oh, weren't you told not to come down here? You can't see your child tonight. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. My daughter is missing. I don't know if she's hurt or what. Please, just tell me where she is. Your name again? Monroe. Stephanie Monroe. My daughter's name is Abby. We live at 324 Kenilworth. I'm going to the jelly. You want something? Could you please just find my daughter? Your child is safe. How do you know? 
That's all I can tell you. That's all you can tell me or that's all you're going to tell me? Look, it's not my job to take care of parents. It's my job to worry about kids. This is all I know. The police are filing charges against you. What are you talking about? Neglect and abuse. Abuse? What kind of abuse? This is a mistake. Mrs. Monroe, you're entitled to a hearing within three days. At that time, the court will decide whether to return your child to the home. You have the right to an attorney within 72 hours. An attorney? Where am I going to get an attorney? The legal aid office opens at 9 a.m. When can I see my daughter? Not before your hearing. There's absolutely nothing else I can do for you. Three days. I'm sorry. Charges. Gary, come on. Gary, what? Gary, come on. Sorry. You want me to come over? No, that's okay. Thanks. I'm gonna get a lawyer tomorrow, and um, he's gonna clear it all up. It's it's just a mistake. Of course, it's a mistake, honey. The lawyer will clear it up. I'll, um, I'll call you tomorrow, okay? You sure you're going to be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay, call me tomorrow. Okay. See a lawyer, please. Been to legal aid before? No, I've never needed a lawyer. Go to room 600, before. fill out a financial form, then come back and take a number. Next. No savings at all? No. Any other income? Uh-uh. Be honest. It could cost you later. 
No. I, I had some saved, but my mother died in her funeral. What oh. about alimony? Child support? No. Why not? I haven't seen him in five and a half years. You should get what's coming to you. We might be able to locate him and force payments. Good luck. How often do you leave your child home alone at night? This was the very first time, and it was only for a couple of hours. What about I... after school? Sometimes, but see, she's really very good, and it's you, a really you've very... You've got a neglect charge, Mrs. Monroe. Are you on drugs? If you'll just let me finish. It's only been for the last few weeks since my mother died. So my mom used to sit... Have you ever used drugs in front of your child? No. Which drugs are you currently using? None! I've got to tell you, Mrs. Monroe, they will find it in your urine. They took my daughter away from me! Now, you're supposed to help me get her back, right? You're supposed to be on my side. What kind of lawyer are you? I'm not a lawyer. I'm a paralegal. You have a seat outside. I'll call you as soon as one of our attorneys has looked over your file. What a mistake all this has been. Yeah, it's Jeff. What is it? Well, I got her a hearing in 90 days. What more does she want? Now, she's lucky the kids weren't put up for adoption. No, you tell her to call me when she can prove she's sober and not before. Okay. All right, Mrs. Monroe. This is what they got on you. Neglect and abuse. Kid left alone in a dangerous apartment. Bruises. What kind of bruises? You tell me. You hit your kid? Did somebody hurt Abby? You spank your kid? N sometimes. Oh, doesn't everybody... Your husband ever spank your kid? I told you I'm divorced. She doesn't see her father. Your boyfriend's ever touch your kid? I don't even have any boyfriends. Oh, come on, Mrs. Monroe. I mean, a pretty girl like you, you're trying to tell me you never had a man up in your apartment? What does that have to do with what's going on now, here? Mrs. Monroe, they got you up on abuse here. Now, let's not waste any more time. I'm trying to prepare a case here, and I need you to cooperate. Look, Mr. Lombardi, if you would just listen no, to no, me... No, no, you I listen to me, Mrs. Monroe. I get 20 mothers a day in here, all swearing to me that they never laid a hand on a kid. And neither did their boyfriends. Now, maybe some of them are telling the truth, or, or maybe they're too stoned to remember. I don't know. I mean, the bottom line is, we got a kid here with bruises he can't explain. She. Her name's Abby. Endangerment of a minor, criminal neglect. Show up for the hearing, and I'll see what I can do. What do you mean? Well, in cases like these, if you keep your mouth shut and clean up your act and get the right judge, you can take your kid home in four to six months. 90 days of her life. No, no, you don't understand. You do not beat my daughter. I love her. I was taking a test at school. They broke into my apartment. They took my daughter away from me. They won't tell me why. They won't even let me see her. I am not like these other parents in here. You've got to help me find her and you've got to get me out of this. Jeff. Yeah, I got the file. I'm going to check it out, and I'll, I'll be right down. Yeah. Look, Mrs. Monroe, we'll go to court, and we'll see what kind of evidence they've got, all right? Wear a dress, like you're going to church. Low heels and no makeup. You got it? Now, if there's been a mistake, we'll clear it up at the hearing, and you can take your kid home. Just hang on for another couple days. Mr. Lombardi, do you know where my daughter is? I'm not sure. They, they usually take the kids up to Fairfax Hall. It's this, this big facility across town. But don't go there. They won't let you see her without permission from the court.
brought here by mistake. Look, we got almost 300 kids here. Do you think you could look her up in a file or something? I, I really need to know if she's here or not. Okay, what's her name? Abby Monroe. When did she get in? Um, last night. Yeah, yeah, she's here. She got in this morning. Oh, thank God. Can I see her? Where is she? Sorry, you gotta have an order from the court. You don't do this to me, please. Just let me see her for five minutes. She's only eight years old. She's never been away from me before. There is nothing I can do, okay? We got our rules. I'm not asking you to break any rules. I just want to talk to her. I, I want to see if she's all right. Look, I'm not going to tell you again. You can't see your kid without a court order. You want to see her so bad, you should have thought about that before you got her sent here. Just let me see my girl. Just want to see her. Now let me see her. Let me see my daughter. Let me tell me where she is. Let me talk to her. I'm just going to talk to her. Just let me see her. Just let me see my daughter. Please don't do this. No, just let me see her. I have a right to see my daughter. No. No. court by nine. It's about her daughter. We don't have any weapons. Look at us. Still gotta go through the metal detector. What's going on? Hey, hey. Back to the other side, please. I'm sorry, Bren. Excuse me, sir, my hearing is at nine. I'm not hearing cases till 11. Guess we just wait, huh? Okay, so I know what to do, right? He's playing. Okay, but what if he does you? It's up to them to prove that you were fine. Want a cup of coffee or something? There must be a cafeteria somewhere. No, I, I don't think I should leave. I think I am going to get us some coffee, okay? Mrs. Monroe? They said they weren't hearing cases yet. They're not hearing your case until tomorrow. Some follow up with the paper processing. Look, it happens. I'm sorry. Just come back tomorrow morning. What about Abby? Is she here? Can I see her? Not till the hearing. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to answer this. Just, uh, we'll know a lot more tomorrow. Well, I know I've had to take a lot of days, and believe me, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't really important. Mm. Uh, yes, Roy, I do know how busy it gets, because... Oh, Roy, come on, don't say that. You know how much I do need this job. Mm. Roy! Mm. He fired me. Oh. Maybe you should have told him why you need to take time off. Oh, yeah, right. Like, I'm going to tell people the police took my little girl away, and they're not going to think I'm some sort of monster. Stephanie, you are not a monster, okay? Don't ever say that, you hear me? You're not. You're a good person, and this is, this is all going to get straightened out tomorrow, and you're going to bring Abby home. Okay? You're going to be okay. You're not a monster. <laughs> you got a little meatloaf here in your hair, but aside <laughs> from that, you're going to be okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without you, Bren. Mm. I just wish I could be there tomorrow, but, you know, I can't afford a sitter two days in a row and everything. Yeah, I know. It's okay. I understand.
Are you sure we're in the right place? Just let me handle this. I know everybody in here, so let me do the talking, all right? together before go. the judge walks in. Set an example for your daughter. Sit over here, Abby. Abby, just sit there like a big girl, okay? And, and we're gonna get you home, okay, sweetie? All rise. Family court is now in session. The Honorable Judge John H. Cotterell presiding. Be seated. This is a preliminary custody hearing. Concerning Abigail Monroe. Is the mother present? This is the mother, Your Honor. This is Stephanie Monroe. Your Honor, I'm here representing Family Services and the minor child. Marion Pearson is the case worker assigned. Yes, I know, Mrs. Pearson, Counselor. The purpose of this hearing is to evaluate whether the child should be returned to the home at this point or whether the circumstances of the case warrant continued custody by the state until a further investigation can be made. Let's hear what you have. Let's have it quickly, please. I've got ten more cases on the docket for today. Although the child states that she'd like to go home, as you can see from the petition file, Your Honor, we have ample evidence for neglect and abuse. The police found the child after she called 911, indicating she was alone and in danger. 911? That's how all this started? Is there a problem, Counselor? Mrs. Um, Monroe, my job is hard enough, so in my court, only one person speaks at a time. I'm sure you have all kinds of things to say, but first, why don't we hear what the charges actually are, okay? Your Honor, if I may approach the bench. These are photographs taken at the scene. There were no working lights in the home, and as the photographs show, the apartment itself is a hazard. Leaking ceiling, paint chips, and on a freezing cold night, they found broken windows and no heat. I got one broken window, and I've been after the super about fixing that and the heat. I paid my electric bill, but the, the way the apartment's wired, you plug two things in and you blow a fuse. But the landlord won't do anything about it. Why don't you bring him into court? Mrs. Monroe, it's your job to keep Abigail safe. And if the police find your daughter in an unheated, dark apartment, which on a winter's night is a life-threatening situation, then it's their job to get her someplace warm. But it's not like I haven't tried to get the heat fixed. What am I supposed to do? In addition, you'll note that the police found the home in extreme disorder. Dirty dishes, garbage, dirty laundry all over. The refrigerator was nearly empty. I work all day. I go to school at night. I'm Sit trying... Sit still and be quiet. You can't go by those pictures. Everything's getting twisted around here. You're supposed to be my lawyer. If you're not going to say anything, I will. Mrs. Monroe, I won't warn you again. Your Honor, we strongly suspect abuse. The child is bruised, and she flinched when the officer tried to touch her. There is a boyfriend, but the examination the child had at the county hospital shows no direct evidence of sexual abuse. What kind of exam? Still, statements made by Abby Warren... And How dare you? Who gave you the right to touch my child? ...of the man's relationship with the child. Your Honor, Mrs. Monroe's behavior throughout is noted as hostile, erratic, and violent. She was abusive at the intake center, and she appeared at the Fairfax Center the other night where she physically attacked a social worker. Yes or no, Mrs. Monroe? Is this true? I was just trying to find my daughter. Yes or no? Yes, but that's not what it Your was Honor, like. Your Honor, this just... uncontrolled behavior coupled with an unclean home environment leads me to believe the mother's a drug abuser. The police found a syringe in the home. Your Honor, I can explain that. Mr. Lombardi, I'd advise your client to quiet herself. My mother was a diabetic. Those were her needles. Okay, that's enough. I find there's ample probable cause for removing the child from the home. <laughs> And I'm ordering an investigation into these serious charges. In two weeks, we'll evaluate the findings, and I'll make a decision as to where Abigail should be placed. She can't come home? Not at this point, Mrs. Monroe. What about visitation, Your Honor? Mrs. Pearson? The child seems upset by the mother's behavior, and if the mother is a substance abuser... I agree. One two-hour visitation weekly, supervised. Look, with all respect, Your Honor, that is nothing. It's decided. Mr. Lombardi, your client's behavior is damaging her case. Take that as a warning. Call the next case. Abby. Come here, come here, come here. Mrs. Monroe. Mommy. Can I go home now? I want to get there. I'm sorry. Soon, I promise. Okay. Come on, Abby. Come on, we have to go. No. Oh, Abby. Abby. No. 
Abby, you have to go with the lady, okay? But I'm going to get you home as soon as I can. I told you to shut up and listen. Now, you might have had your kid back if you'd listened to that. Uh, you can't expect me to just sit there and That's listen. That's exactly no what I expect. Thanks for telling me about that stunt you pulled at Fairfax. I mean, if I told you not to go there, that alone was enough to force an investigation. Now, unless you want to lose your daughter for good, you're going to have to learn to deal with the system. I'm innocent. I'm being screwed over, and you're not doing anything to stop it. You want to go back to legal aid and get a new lawyer? That's fine with me. You think about it. You've got two weeks till your next hearing. my visitation. I have a court order at this time. Mrs. Monroe. Wait here. I'll get her. have some time alone with my daughter. Sorry. Court says gotta be supervised. How are you feeling, Abby? Are they treating you all right? I don't like it here, Mommy. Look. I brought you all your favorites. Grandma's special meatballs. Carrot sticks. Butterscotch pudding. So we're gonna have a picnic, just you and me, right here. What I'm not you... hungry. Can we eat it at home tonight? Abby, listen to me. I'm just visiting today. See, the lawyer fixed it so I can come visit you once a week until the big court hearing. And that's when I'm gonna make them let you come home with me. I wanna go home now! I know, baby, I want that too. But we're just going to have to wait for two weeks. Why? Because, uh, because those are the rules. But I want to go home. I have to be in the assembly, remember? I'm going to be an Indian. He made me a costume member. Of course I remember, sweetie. Let's go, mommy, please. Please, don't do this. Just listen to me, please, honey, sweet. Just listen to me. I want you to come home, too. But you just can't come home today. I want to go home! I want to go home! Please, please. 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 Abby, please. Abby, when the lights went out. I wanted to call you, but I couldn't see the phone numbers. And I was scared, 
So I thought I should call 911 like you said. But they didn't get you. And they just sent the police, Mommy. I was just... I just wanted to make you a cake when you got home. I'm sorry you were so scared. Abby, I'm gonna get you out of here. I promise. Don't worry about me, Mommy. I'll be okay. Test came back negative, Mrs. Monroe. Surprise, surprise. Excuse me? I told you, and everyone else. My mother was a diabetic. Those were her needles. If you people will just well, listen to me. Well, now that you're here, you can clear up a few other things for me. The police report said you had no food in your refrigerator. I was going to go shopping the next day. I had to be at work by 7. I had class that night. The bed was unmade. The sheets were dirty. Why was that, Mrs. Monroe? Mrs. Pearson, you work. Don't you ever get behind with your house? The police yes. found your child living in substandard conditions, and you were going to make everything better tomorrow? This is not the way you're making it sound. I do the best I can for Abby. I'm sure you do, Mrs. Monroe. I'm just trying to understand this report and how things got this bad. I'm wondering where you and Abby are headed. How old were you when you got pregnant? I was almost 16. Did your mother approve of your sexual activities? She didn't know about it. So you were largely unsupervised as a child. Mrs. Pearson, my mother loved me and she did her best for me. My father died when I was 10. She had to go to work just to put food on the table and keep a roof over our heads. My mother spent her entire life working like a slave and coming home exhausted. Your mother, have you help her around the house like you do with Abby? My mother taught me to look after myself, to be independent. Were you looking after yourself when you got pregnant and had to drop out of high school? Or when you had to marry your high school boyfriend and wound up divorced two years later? Don't you think I know I made mistakes? Just because you're sitting behind this big desk and, and, and you went to college does not mean you can tell me how to run my life. Mrs. Monroe, I see you raising your daughter the same way your mother raised you. And I see you and Abby headed for disaster. How can you say that? You've never even seen us together. Mrs. Monroe, I see a mother who's got more than she can deal with. Who's more than happy to forget her child is eight years old and lets her stay alone and lets her run the house. Your daughter thinks she's a grown-up, but she's not. She thinks that she can handle anything, but she can't. You want her to end up pregnant at 16 like you did? No! That could never happen to Abby, not my daughter. Why not? Don't you think I care about what happens to her? Don't you think I love her? Mrs. Monroe, I think you had a baby when you were still a baby yourself. And I think you need some time to get your life in shape now that you no longer have your mother to help you raise your daughter. You need time to figure out what a normal level of responsibility is for a child Abby's age. You let an eight-year-old talk you into letting her stay alone? That raises some serious questions about who's the parent here and who's the child. Mrs. Monroe, you know I've been authorized by the court to make a thorough investigation of your home life to determine whether you are a fit mother and to make my recommendations to the court. Now, if we go in there together with a voluntary plan of action, it'll be much easier on you and Abby, and there'll be no need for an investigation. Mrs. Pearson, I'm willing to do anything for my daughter. Then, Mrs. Monroe, I think you should tell the judge that you're willing to take six months to get your life together so that you can become a more effective parent. And in that six months, you agree to put Abby in foster care. We'll find the best possible family for her. You expect me to sign this? After you discuss it with your attorney. I wanted to knock her teeth down her throat. 
So what are you going to do? You know, what really burns me is the way she kept on saying I don't have my life together. What makes her the expert? Well, she sees a lot of families. So? Look, Steph, don't take this the wrong way, but maybe there's some truth in what she says. No, there isn't. Bren, they're saying I can't take care of Abby. You don't think that's true, do you? M maybe you just got too much on your plate right now, you know? Between work and school and Abby being so little, I know I couldn't do all that. Yeah, well, you don't have to. You have Gary. <sighs> Look, Stephanie, I don't know anything about this stuff, all right? But these people, this is their job. Do you think I should give Abby up? I don't know. Maybe just for a little while, you know? Just till you get a better job and a better place to live. I can't believe live. you. Brenda, I thought you were my friend. After all I've done for you, if you have to Well, ask... I'm not the one saying give up your kid. Well, I'm not the one who left my kid all alone. I gotta go. Yeah. Terrific. Send her in. Have a seat, Mrs. Monroe. You got about a week before you go back to court. Last time, neither one of us was very pleased with the other's performance, so let's cut to the chase. You want a new lawyer? No, Mr. Lombardi. Mrs. Monroe, are you all right? Yeah, I just did, I didn't sleep too well last night. Well, uh, we have some things to go over here. Uh, first off, did you see your daughter at Fairfax? It was awful. What happened? Mrs. Monroe, if you caused any more trouble there, I need to know. Did you? Mrs. Monroe. No, but... Okay. That's good news. As you may recall, we didn't look so good in court, so we've got to think about minimizing the damage at this point. Now, considering the circumstances, there is some good news. Family Services is willing to make a deal. I think Mrs. Pearson spoke to you about this? She wants to put Abby in foster care. Look, they're out to get you at this point. Now, if you do what they say and avoid an investigation, at least we don't have to worry about what else they'll dig up. You don't want an investigation, Mrs. Monroe. Believe me. I mean, you could be a cross between Mother Teresa and Snow White and they'd still find something. I don't care about an investigation. I don't care about me. I just want to do what's best for Abby. I thought I was doing so good. I mean, I was really trying hard. The truth is... I guess I really am a bad mother. Mrs. Monroe, I, I wouldn't think that way. Well, why else would they want to take my baby away from me? I've got to live in a dump. I can't buy her things. And she's such a good little girl. I left my baby all alone. Even my best friend, she thinks... She thinks I'm a bad mother, too. I should have known something was going to happen that night. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody keeps saying that I should give Abby up as if somehow that's going to make it better. I don't see how. I don't understand how that's going to make it better. <laughs> Neither do I, Mrs. Monroe. I see so many people. Crackheads and junkies and... I suppose I forgot what a real mother looks like. I apologize. I misjudged you. Listen. Abby needs you. And I want to help. I'm willing to fight. If you are.
you okay? I try calling you, but I, I never get an answer. And, and Roy says something about you leaving work because Abby was sick. No, we're, I... we're fine, Tommy. Thank you. So, can I come in for a sec? When I couldn't get you on the phone, I, I thought maybe Abby was in the hospital or something. Well, you can give her this anyway. You look beat. Are you sure you're okay? Um, it's Abby. They took her away from me. You mean like one of those custody things with your ex? No, it's worse than that. It's complicated. I, uh, left her alone when I went to school. Something happened. She called 911. The cops came and they just took her away. They filed charges against me. God, I never should have left her alone like that. It's okay, Steph. I'm here. It's okay. Not a lawyer? We'll fight this, Steph. You're a great mom. You'll show him. Anything you want me to do. Anything. You just ask. Understand? I feel so alone. Not. show what 10 years now remember how we used to cut gym and then sneak back to your place oh that was so great your mom at work the house to ourselves full fridge and no ironing you know i've been thinking maybe the way i remember things as a kid isn't the way they really were why because of what that social worker said no just because i need to know you know how, like how my mom raised me what it was really like as a kid well you gotta admit, you were pretty wild. I mean, I loved you for it, but... Hey, we're not gonna get in another fight about this, are no. we? I really screwed up my life in high school. Well, all the things I wanted but was too chicken to go for, you went after. You mean boys like Jimmy Monroe? Maybe I should have been more chicken, huh? You know... Your mom came over to our house and cried after you had to drop out of school. Just broke down on my mom's arms while they were doing the dishes. I just remember she kept saying how you were so smart and a fighter and how she figured somehow you'd go to college, but since you got married so young, you were going to have to spend your whole life fighting for the wrong things. She said she'd never be able to forgive herself. I remember my, my dad came in and poured three shots of whiskey in her coffee to try and calm her down. Can you imagine your mother drinking in the kitchen with my old man? Yeah, but none of those things were her fault, Bren. I mean, I remember myself as being so tough then. I didn't think I need anybody worrying about me. Well, you weren't so tough. You just thought you were. Your mom knew that, you know? No, Abby's not so tough either. You know, it's funny. I don't blame my mom for anything. But when it comes to Abby, I feel responsible for everything. I mean, everything. I feel the same way everybody does. Yeah, but I've been trying so hard to make Abby grow up strong so she could look after herself. And then I think she's really just a baby. She shouldn't have to worry about things. I should just let her be a kid. Look, 
Nobody is the perfect mother. Nobody. You cannot let these social workers start playing with your head. I worry a hundred times a day that I'm making my kids as screwy as I am, right? I mean, I don't know. You just keep going from day to day, I guess. Look, you've been doing a great job. You have this beautiful, smart kid. She loves you to pieces. She really is special, huh? Yeah. You and Abby are really all I have left, Brent. I know. I miss your mom, Steph. We had some really good talks. I can't lose Abby, too. I'm here to see my daughter, Abby Monroe. This is my lawyer, Mr. Lombardi. Yeah, I've got a court order. We have to ask Abby some questions. We'll need about an hour. It's really a wonder they don't all have chicken pox. Why didn't somebody tell me she was in the infirmary? Abby, look who's here. Mommy. Sweetie, it's me. You know, it makes your chicken pox worse if you scratch, sweetie. I'm sorry, I was a bad girl. I promise I'll be good if they let me come home. Abby, sweetie, listen to me. None of this is your fault, baby. Do you understand me? You didn't do anything wrong. None of this was your fault. Come here. Come here. Oh, you're just a little girl. Mommy's here now, and I'm going to take care of you, okay? Mommy's always going to take care of you. Mrs. Monroe, better watch the time. Do you remember Mr. Lombardi? He's Mommy's friend. Now, he has to ask you some very important questions, okay, sweetie? He's going to help get you out of here. Hi, Abby. Hi. Abby, how did you hurt yourself? I want you to tell me everything you told your mom, okay? We've got six days till the hearing. And you know what you gotta do, right? Yeah, I gotta walk in there with a new job. And then there's my apartment. If the super's not gonna fix that broken window, then I'll just have to fix it myself. And Mrs. Pearson set your home inspection for Monday. Well, fine. They're not gonna get anything to use against me. What I want to know from you is what else? I mean, from a legal point of view. you got to help me do it right this time. Well, get Abby into a child care program. They're not going to trust any private arrangement you work out with your friends. I have some papers I want you to sign. I'm going to put a tracer on your husband. It's about time he started paying Abby's child support. The last Abby heard from him was a birthday card. She turned three. I wouldn't waste my time. Poverty, that's your problem, Mrs. Monroe. Being a single mother. And it seems to me you and Abby don't have one problem that a little money wouldn't fix. Yeah, me and the rest of the world. Look, I appreciate what you're trying to do, I really do, but I promised myself a long time ago I'd quit waiting on Jimmy Monroe, so what is it that I can do for Abby's case? They're gonna dig up your personal life, use anything that even looks bad against you. Now, I hate to say this, but it'd go a lot better for us if you didn't have any men in your life right now. now I know it's not fair, but any sexual situation could be construed as having a bad influence on the child. Have you been seeing this guy, Tom, since this whole thing started? Well, I'd advise you to stop seeing him, Mrs. Monroe. Look, I'm sorry, but I just don't think you should take any chances if you want to get Abby back. You know I'd do anything to get my daughter back. You know that. But Tom is such a great guy. He's a really good man. This isn't fair. It's not about what's fair, is it? No. This is about what I have to do to get my daughter back. Our staff are really dedicated, and we have a very low worker-child ratio. So our kids get a lot of love and attention. It's a beautiful place. How much does it cost? $450 a month. That's way too much for me. Well, we do have a limited number of scholarships. Oh, you, you do? Great. We'll fill out an application, put you on the waiting list. Give me a call in the spring. Perhaps you could leave your daughter with a relative in the meantime.
need you to help me out. See, I've got this custody hearing. And I've got to go to court and prove I've got something. Anything. I wish I could help you. You've already missed three classes. You did so well on the midterm, but once you fall behind like that, it gets harder and harder to catch up. I know, that's why I wanted to talk to you. I don't want to get personal, but whatever your problem is right now, don't use it as an excuse to fail the course. I promise I'll do even better on the final. Well, don't promise me, Stephanie. Promise yourself. I mean, this is your career, your future. I know. I can't take your money like this. I've never done it before. I don't want to start now. What are you going to do? Pay your rent with Monopoly money? Huh? Come on. We both want you to have it. You got to keep yourself going for Abby's sake. Thanks, Gary. Really. I'll pay back every penny as soon as I get work. Brother and me, we, uh, found some stuff down a cellar. And I think you can caulk that busted window with this and, uh, space eater here you can have. It. You're gonna have this place looking great in no time. Yeah. Whew. I just hate the whole idea that social worker come around here to check you out. Yeah. My lawyer says she's gonna be everywhere, sneaking around asking questions about me. You know, I went by the diner to try and get my job back, and she was there. You know, it's, it's like we're in China or something. better if we don't see each other anymore. What are you talking about? Well, my lawyer says I shouldn't get involved with you because they could use it against me if they think I have men coming up here or something. So I, I think you better go. That social worker, she, she came by the diner, but, but all I said was everybody liked you and how you were a really hard worker. I, I mean, did I say anything wrong? No. But she's still investigating me and... I won't lose Abby over you. I've been trying so hard to figure out a way to tell you this so it made sense, but it just doesn't make sense. It's just the way it has to be. Well, there's got to be somewhere around this. I, I mean, what's so wrong about somebody caring about you? I'm not giving up on you, stuff. You tell me I gotta leave and for Abby's sake. I'll leave. But I'm coming back as soon as all this gets straightened out. I'm sorry.
If you say anything, they'll just use it to keep you here. Who started this? I don't care how it's done, but I want this dorm cleaned up before I get back. Come with me. You've got an appointment. Abby, why won't you talk to me? Abby, do you want to go back and live with your mommy? Abby, how do you feel when your mommy leaves you at home alone? Abby, how does your mommy punish you when you're bad? Abby, do you want to play with this doll? Hmm? This is a little girl, and I want you to pretend that you are her mommy, okay? Mrs. Monroe, would you come in now? show your mommy the doll we were playing with? Abby, I'm really worried about what this place is doing to her. Abby? Abby, come on, honey. You want to be a good girl and answer the doctor when he talks to you? Abby, the doctor asked you a question. See, sometimes she's really very shy with people she doesn't know very well. But most kids are like that, aren't they? Please don't do this. Come on, sit up now. She's never been away from home before. We get a pretty demanding lunch crowd in here, and they expect things just so. Well, I'm a quick learner. I'm not afraid of hard work. It's minimum wage, but the friendlier you are to the customers, the bigger tips you'll get. Well, I'll tell you. Let me take a look at the schedule, see what's what. Check with me sometime Monday, and I'll let you know. I need a job. I've been everywhere. I have to know now. I got it. What are you doing here? Is everything okay? Well, I got the psychologist's report today. Yeah. We need to talk. I didn't want you to hear it for the first time tomorrow. It doesn't look good. I don't get it. The way Abby was hugging me, anybody could see she loves me and she wants to come home. Sometimes kids who are abused act that way. I mean, in spite of everything, they still love their parents. I'm afraid it doesn't mean much. 
This guy says Abby is pouty, exhibits displaced aggression, shows signs of being an emotionally disturbed child. That's crazy. Let me see this. Sullen, uncooperative. Well, how would you act if you were taken away from home in the middle of the night and put in a prison like that? Look, we'll go to court and we'll fight it. But the psychologist is still the expert, right? They've already got all their evidence against me. They're going to crucify me on this child care thing. Mrs. Pearson's already convinced I'm a lousy mother. So no matter what I say or what I've done in the past couple of weeks to change things, they can still take Abby away from me tomorrow. Can't they? I wasn't sure you'd still be in. Mrs. Monroe, do we have an appointment? No, but I really need to talk to you. Don't believe that stuff the psychologist said about Abby. It's not true. Mrs. Monroe, I have been here 12 hours today. I'll see you in court. But morning. you've never even seen us together. I mean, before all this happened. I mean, you don't know what Abby's really like or, or what kind of mother I really am or the kind of things we do together or how involved I am at her school. Please, Mrs. Monroe. Abby's teacher says she's never even met you. That's because the school year just started. My mother just died. Did you talk to Abby's teacher from last year, too? Mrs. Gutierrez knows me because I've been to every parent's day. And what about Miss Burke, the counselor from the summer program at the park? She knows me because I, I chaperone two field trips. If you would just talk to the right people. Well, thank you for your suggestions. I'll take it under consideration. Mrs. Pearson, isn't it possible that sometimes an investigation isn't the way it looks? Couldn't you just admit you're wrong? In my job, I don't get a chance to be wrong. A man sat in my office, crying, in that chair, begging me to help him get his little boy back, <laughs> swearing that he changed. And I fell for him. I really believed him when he told me things were going to be different. A week later, they reported a murder on Channel 5. I can't tell you how I felt coming in from work, turning on the TV and recognizing that little boy's face. I have to justify what I do. You'll get your chance in court tomorrow. Square. We've located your ex-husband. I can't believe it. Yeah, he lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> Jimmy in Arizona. He's an auto mechanic. He's employed full time. We'll file for child support. We'll garner his wages if we have to. Mechanic. It's the one place you could always find Jimmy underneath a car. He's married. He's got a ten-month-old little girl. Mrs. Monroe, you okay? Mm-hmm. Just a little weird. You know the rules, Lombardi. Come on, Caesar, cut us some slack, no, huh? I just want to give her this. Just be quick. Baby. <laughs> Abby, honey, we're going to be seeing the judge in a little while. But I want you to know that you're going to come home with me and everything's going to be okay. Now, the judge might say that you have to stay away just a little while longer, but you are going to come home. Whatever happens in there, I, I want you to know how much I appreciate what you've done for me and Abby. Mrs. Monroe. No, really, I mean it. 
A lot of people wouldn't have cared. And with everything that's been going on, I just haven't had a chance to say... Thank you. I'll give it my best. I think Abby's lucky to have a mother like you. Case number 14, the matter of Abigail M. We're on. My client has been through a nightmare. She came home one night to find her daughter missing, not knowing if Abby was dead or alive. Stephanie Monroe has been treated like a criminal. She's been subjected to repeated humiliation and degradation by a system all too eager to jump to the wrong conclusions. Your Honor, the state's recommendation of foster care is clearly unwarranted. Now, I have refuted the so-called evidence here point by point. As for that psychologist's report, it is nothing but a, a string of unfounded assumptions based on one session spent with the child. A child who was totally despondent after being forcibly taken from her home. Now, Mrs. Monroe and her daughter Abby have a, a close, loving relationship, I know. I've seen them together. And I've spoken to Abby's first grade teacher, and I've spoken to her camp counselor. Now, it seems to me that Family Services has gone on a fishing expedition to justify the continued removal of Abby from the home. By now, it should be clear to this court that keeping this child from her mother is a mistake. Let's not forget our real purpose here. To keep families together. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Monroe, what most concerns me is the question of adequate child care. I think that's the critical issue here. Your Honor, please don't make this about child care. I've been to every child care place in the city. Believe me, there's nothing out there. I mean, if this whole thing boils down to me putting Abby in daycare for you to give her back to me, don't you think I'd do it? I mean, if I could? This is my best friend, Brenda Davis. Now, Abby is going to be with her every minute of the day when she's not with me or in school. Mrs. Monroe, what guarantees can you give the court that this arrangement won't fail again, as it has in the past? It won't fail, Your Honor. I won't let it. Not after what I've been through. Now, I, I know I've made mistakes. Believe me, I've learned from them. But because of what happened that one night, which will never happen again, you can't possibly say Abby deserves to be locked up in a place like Fairfax. Abby belongs with me. Nobody in this room loves her more or can take better care of her. I'm her mother. Mrs. Monroe, how much longer would this arrangement with your friend have to continue? I've only got three more weeks of school left, so it would only be a few more nights. I'm trying to make something of myself, Your Honor. I want to give Abby a future. The family services people, they can't give us a better life. Only I can, if you'll just let me. Please, don't take her away from me. It's just not right. I love my daughter. And I swear I will never let anything bad happen to her again. I appreciate how you feel, Mrs. Monroe. We have a difficult decision to make. Marion? Okay. Your Honor. The first and only consideration of family services must be the welfare of Abigail Monroe. In light of the statements made in court today, my agency must still take an active interest in this child. But taking into consideration the personal factors here, I would be willing to recommend mandatory follow-up inspections for one year while we give this mother a chance to prove herself. I think we can safely return this child to the home. <laughs> this court finds that the minor child shall be returned to the home effective immediately, pursuant to the following provisions. Okay. One, two, three.
going home now. Okay, we're going home. <laughs>